I want to welcome all of His Glory Nation as we continue our series in the book of Philippians. Tonight we will close out Philippians. We're in chapter 4. And as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher and the living Word of God, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Okay, let's get in Paul's uh, final chapter to the church of Philippi. And we'll start with chapter 1. Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, He's uh, saying how much his love uh, Paul has for the church of Philippi and how they've, he has great joy uh, the, of their, their love inside the ecclesia and how they're growing with him and doing the things of the Lord. And uh, they were a blessing to Paul, um, actually provided for uh, Paul's uh, well-being, one of the only churches really to uh, provide for, for the Apostle Paul. Long for, brethren, my joy and crown, um, so steadfast in the Lord, beloved. So my joy and crown, he says, my joy is coming from you, you my beloved, and the crown which he has given from the Lord of authority. Uh, so that is uh, not anything that he've done of works, the Apostle Paul. We know the five crowns that you get are uh, out of love for the Lord as part of the Bema seat. So he's telling, the st- so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. He's saying, stand fast, keep the fight, keep steadfast, keep continuing, because uh, Satan and his uh, demonics are going to try to stop uh, God's purpose of spreading the gospel. And we need to build each other up and stay steadfast and finish the race. That is the, the call to the church today all over the world, to be that light, that beacon of light in this world of darkness, the rising up of the Spirit of the Lord in the year of the Jubilee, to be that beacon of light, that beacon of hope, and be that difference and love our neighbor as uh, Christ has told us to. That means love your, love your so-called enemy. Pray for them. Bring them in. Show them that the, the, the light of Christ is different. And there are going to be tough times. There are going to be trials and tribulations. Paul went through many trials and tribulations. And we need to stay steadfast. This is not a, uh, a, a, a call that the Lord says is going to be comfortable. We're not called to be comfortable. We are called to be steadfast, to finish the race, to persevere, to overcome, to get that joy, peace, hope, love that can only come through those trials and tribulations to st- establish our faith in the Lord. So that's what Paul is saying. Fats and beloved. I implore Judea and I implore Sinta to be in the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel. So they were out uh, preaching the gospel. Women preaching the gospel. Yes, women preach the gospel. It's always been uh, the, the Lord's intent to, to have the women preach the gospel. With Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are written in the book of life, meaning that they're going to be home with the Lord. They're doing the will of the Lord and uh, 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 spreading the gospel. Uh, and he's saying, uh, pray for them. And he's saying, help them. So help uh, any spirit-filled felt church uh, financially. That's you know a tithe. An offering is biblical to the Lord. It's not, uh, should you do it, it's a commandment from the Lord. And it will go well with you because he's testing your, your, the intent of your heart. Are you, are you advancing my kingdom? So do, help financially those, uh, those, those ministries that are bringing in the, the, the gospel, doing what the Lord wants them to do. In these end times, the key and most important thing is, is to bring in the harvest. Support those, those ministries and those churches and those uh, that are bringing in the, the gospel of the Lord. And, and, and also to lift them up in prayer. People ask me all the time, what can, you do for, what, what can we do for his glory ministry? We don't have much. And I said, you, can, you have something that's more than any money can buy. And that is the love of Christ in you. And pray for this ministry and the intercessors to pray all over the world to, so that his glory ministry will reach all corners and continue to bring in the harvest exactly the way uh, that God has his hand on his ministry and is doing today. Rejoice in the Lord always, and I again say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. He didn't say on Sunday. He didn't say before you go to bed. Rejoice in the Lord. Just take a step and just think and look. And next time you go outside, just take a big just fresh air. Look around and see all the creations that the Lord did and how much he's blessed you. And, and, and if you're not a believer of Jesus Christ and the one true God, look around 
and, and, and ask the questions to the Lord. Lord, are you true? If your son is the son of God, if your son is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, show me. Give me a sign. Remember in these end days, we're seeing more miracles coming in the name of the Lord than any time. And the out, great outpouring is about to happen. This month of February on the, the, the uh, Gregorian calendar, this is the, the month for intercessors around the world to pray because God's outpouring is upon us. It's going to be an absolute drenching, and we need to share that glory all over the world to bring the, the, all the lost in to know who the true God is and through his son, Jesus Christ. So he's saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And it's just, you know, take, don't take him for granted. Just stop and praise him. Stop and give him glory. Or while you're walking, just praise him and give him glory. And uh, that doesn't need to be outwardly. You can do that while you're, while you're, everybody has time in the day, no matter what your job is or what you're doing, that you can silently pray with the Lord as you go to and fro, whatever the Lord has you to do in your life. Uh, verse 5, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. It's the gentleness. It's the meek. And the meek not being the weak, but the, 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 those that are that looked at the least in, on the earth, which will be first in heaven. The, those who are, as he's saying, um, that gentleness, this love, this caring, this thoughtfulness. And one thing we see uh, a lot of Muslim people uh, of Muslim uh, from Islam come to his glory ministry. And one of the biggest surprises they see is not what they've read from uh, the traditions from their parents and their grandparents and the, the, you know, what the Quran teaches them, that the, the, his glory ministry shows great compassion and love for them. Even if they are a Muslim, it doesn't matter. You are all a creation of the Most High God, and we love all creation. And we pray that each and every one of you will accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and then we become brothers and sisters in eternity with the Most High God. And we're not going to force you. We're not going to take a sword to you. We're not doing anything other than loving you and praying for you that you may accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is our, that is our, our only... Uh, hope and that's our only steadfast thing that we do to bring in the gospel from east to west to north to south and in these end days it's working because hundreds and hundreds and hundreds are coming in each week to giving their heart to the lord throughout all of his glory ministry we're close to 600,000 followers on facebook alone we're over 800,000 plus followers on all social media and the lord's hand is on this ministry and it's going to get nothing but bigger and bigger and bigger so praise his name. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. That means request. So don't be anxious for anything. We, God doesn't want us to be anxious. Let's, we walk hand in hand with him and knowing it's all for his purpose. And everything we do is in prayer. We're, we're, we're submitting to prayer. And with thanksgiving, we're giving thanksgiving because we, we're, all these things are for the Lord and from the Lord so that we're not anxious. It's been very tough for us here at His Glory Ministry not to be anxious because we know that there's a huge calling on the Lord, from the Lord for this ministry. He's told us many times for many years now this this ministry will be known all over the world and it's going to explode absolutely just just rock it and be one of the largest ministries uh out there but we have to be not anxious in the lord until his time is perfect and just pray and seek him in thanksgiving and know that his truth will follow through and when he tells us he's going to do something he always does it and everything he's done so far for this ministry he's 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 done it accordingly and we know we're on we're we're on the verge of a great drenching and the ministry of his glory will just absolutely explode throughout all the nations much further than what it is today even though we're uh, approaching a million people already this is nothing compared to what the lord has installed for his ministry to be his glory uh, so thanksgiving and let your request be made known to God. Request your known to be God in thanksgiving, your request. Uh, God wants to hear from you. He wants to know what your requests are. He wants to know your hurts. He wants to know your, your pains. And he wants to be there to show you, guide you, and teach you. And he wants you to uh, do this in a loving and thanksgiving way and trust him. People ask me all the time, you know, you have a great, great relationship with the Lord. Uh, uh, will, you, will you ask him a question for me? Will you pray for me? Uh, yeah, I'll pray for you. But you can have the same relationship. I'm no different than anybody else. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm the least. As Paul says, I'm the chief, I myself am the chief sinner. Uh, I've fallen far short of the glory of God. 
but it's by his grace and his love that he's picked me up. And I sought his face with a diligent heart, a heart like David, this David, same as the David of the, of, of the Old Testament. And that's what he's looking for, a heart that loves him with every ounce of their soul and being. And if you have that heart, he will listen to you. He will seek you. He will guide you. And he will give you things that maybe you don't, you're not asking for because you think you want, but he'll give you what you need. And that is far more important than any richness on the world and through life. The peace, uh, so uh, known to Theos, verse 7. And the peace of God, the peace, the only peace that you can get in this world of, 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 of melting down. You know, you, we've mentioned this many times, whether you're a rock star or a movie star or a, a professional athlete or somebody that has all kinds of power, money, fame, fortune. They always have this, this, this emptiness, and that emptiness is Jesus Christ, and an emptiness that no, no matter what they get, they don't have this sense of peace. And when you have an intimate relationship with the Most High God through His Son, Jesus Christ, you have this peace that the world cannot give you. This, this shalom, it's just, it, it isn't all over you that no matter what, you know that you're just passing through this. You're a pilgrim. You're just going to finish the race. And you know your home is on high. Your eternal life is with him forever. And he gives you that peace, hope. Even in trials and tribulations, you think, wow, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it and trust you. I trust you with all things. That's what Pete's telling us. Have that and that peace of, of God, of Theos, the peace that can only come from Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, which surpasses all understanding means we can't understand this in our mortal minds because it's not an intellectual understanding. It's an understanding that can only come from the Spirit. And the only way we can get to the Spirit of the Lord is giving our heart to Him. And giving our heart, He, he gives us trials and tribulations to build us up in the sanctification process so that we are faithful to Him. He's building our faith. He's molding us as the great, as the, as the great molder of a clay. And so that we get closer and we trust him and have that peace that, that is beyond any other standing, uh, understanding of the world. The world doesn't understand. We're set apart. We're different. The world looks at us as the least, and they don't understand because their understanding is of the worldly ways instead of the spirit of the Lord. And that's what Paul's saying. Well, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It means he's, he's guarding you. But you have to put on the full armor, be strong and courageous, as Joshua and Caleb were strong and courageous. They believe the Lord, and they're the only two that came back with a, with a report saying, yeah, they're gigantes, yeah, they're Nephilim, yeah, they got big walls, and yeah, the, we, in, in the flesh, we have no chance. But we have the greatest God, we have the great God, the great I am that I am, Elohim, and with you. Him, he who is in you is stronger than he who is in the world. And Joshua and Caleb believed they were strong and courageous, knowing that God the Father and the Elohim was with them, and they were going to conquer, because no weapon ever formed can come against the Lord's anointed ones and for his purpose and for his glory. And that's what Paul is saying here. Guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. It's also two elements of, of the spiritual warfare. The helmet of salvation is guard our mind so that we're not in, it's done by the, the demonic ways. And that's why God is telling us not open up any portals of sorcery, of anything of, of the evil one. And, he's, and the breastplate of righteousness. Why does it say the blessed breastplate of righteousness? The breastplate covers what in, a, in the military? It covers your heart because that organ is, is death. If you get stabbed or shot in the heart, you're dead. That is the lifeblood. That is the soul of the spirit. That is the lifeblood of a human. And we're guarding the heart. And why is it righteous? Because you can't only get to righteousness to the Lord through your heart. You don't get righteous by works. You get it by the condition of one's heart seeking him and loving him. Those are two of the elements of what Paul talks about, of the seven elements in Ephesians 6.10. And it can only be done through the, the Christ Jesus, as Paul saying. Verse 8, finally, brethren, this is so incredible. This is a beautiful, beautiful passage. And this is what we need to do always but especially in these end times, focus on the good. Focus on the, the, the love. Focus on what is pure of the Lord. Focus on what his word says. Focus on what his commandments are. Focus on what his will for us in our life. Focus on being that beacon of light in this world of darkness. So he's saying, finally, brother, whatever things that are true, whatever things that are true, the only thing that's true is the Lord Jesus Christ through and God the Father and the Holy Spirit and his word. So focus on the truth, him and his word. 
whatever things are noble. The only thing noble in this world is, is, is to be a servant to the Most High God. Whatever things are just, the only thing just is what the Lord says, it says is just. We don't do it of works. When we, do, we are obedient, we come home to be with the Lord in the, in the Bema seat. He says, well done, my faithful servant. That's the greatest answer to a homecoming you could ever hear from the God, God the Most High, the great God, the great I am that I am, Elohim. Whatever things are pure, the only things of pure are from the holiness of the Lord. And we can't be holy without the sacrifice of our high priest, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross so that we can reconcile to God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to be pure in his eyes as the sin is washed away. As Isaiah says, your sins will be as scarlet, but they will be washed as white as snow. They're pure. He sees the purity. He doesn't look at that anymore. And um, we're, we're, the, the story of my testimony is out there. Uh, we, we're we're going to be doing a book, and uh, the Lord has said a movie will be coming out at some point as well. And uh, we're going to go into gr greater detail. Some of the things the Lord has said that ties right into this is absolutely amazing. The things he tells us and we can put trust in. And he, he works us through these tr tr uh, tremendous trials and tribulations. We always have to stay strong to the Lord. And that purity is through trusting him and accepting Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Whatever things are lovely. Whatever things are, are of love, agape love, do it for love. Remember Jesus said the two greatest commandments are love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. All the commandments and the prophets, Moses and the prophets, everything, meaning all the word of God, all wrapped up in love. It's all about a love that he has for us and we have for him. That's what it's all about. If you could sum up the Bible in one word, it would be agape from the Greek. The, the highest form of unconditional love. Praise his name. What are things are, are, are of good report? The only thing of good report is of what doing for the Lord and, and, and seeking his face and being obedient to him. Is there any virtue? If there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. He's saying meditate on the purity of God's word, purity of his joy, purity, purity, uh, the purity of, 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 of his love, the purity of his commandments, the purity of, his, of the joy that you get from him. Focus, meditate, and get on him. Uh, my, 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 uh, my, my son's... Uh, often kid me at night um, because the TV will be on, but my mind is gone. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the, the, the after effects of, of chronic fatigue uh, from botulism and then this other uh, food, uh, food uh, toxin that I got last year that's just, you know, completely has, has done my central nervous system uh, great, great pain and suffering and, and, and get very tedious and tired. So I'll be in the, at night after the day, and I am just completely zapped. And uh, the TV will be on, but my, my mind is not there. I'm meditating on the greatness of the Lord, and that's the thing the Lord has done. Even through my afflictions of having that, those, that chronic fatigue and pain and not being able to physically do things like I used to do and have that hurt and have that uh, lack of you know, being tired, uh, but I can meditate on him, and he gives me that peace, joy, hope, and it's all through his glory. And those are the times that he whispers to me and gives me that spirit, gives me his spirit, gives me that hope and says, I got it. I'm going to guide you through this, my son. I have you in the palm of my hand. And that's nothing you can buy in this world. That is the, the, the glory of the Lord, trusting in him. The things that you've learned and received um, and heard and saw in me, these do. And that the theos of peace will be with you. So he's saying the things that I came because I was inspired by God showing you these things. Not that I've done anything in the flesh, but what I've done of the Spirit. Follow these things, and the joy of the Lord will be with you. The peace of Theos, the peace that the world can't give you. That peace, joy, hope that is just, you can't put into words. And again, as if people ask me all the time that with my experience of seeing heaven or having a taste of heaven and two near-death experiences, it, it was a peace, and it was the love. It was just... It, you can't even put it in words. As Paul, in his near-death experience, when he was taken up to th th heaven, no eye can see, no ear can hear, no mind can conceive what God has in store for those who love him. It's just unconditional love and just this peace that you've never had in your entire life. 
you just you're just you're you're just give glory to him. It's absolutely positively amazing, and you know where your home is, and you know you have a you you have a uh, you have you have something to do for the Lord before he takes you home. But when he does take you home, it's going to be in glory, and it is something that is just absolutely incredible. I've experienced it firsthand. Thank you to the Lord. The things which you've learned and received and heard and saw me do these, as he says, verse 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you care, uh, you care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Saying in the past, they didn't have opportunity to bless him financially and give him things to help his ministry out. But now they are. And that's one thing we said earlier, it, it's biblical to tithe, to be able to bless, bless the hand of, of the ministries that are bringing in the lost. Bless those ministries, whoever they may be. Seek them and have the Lord uh, help you with those. God wants us to uh, invest, uh, invest into these ministries to expand the kingdom glory. And that's what the Church of Philippi is doing. They're, they're, they're helping Paul in that matter. And they're doing it out of love, and they're doing it because they can, and they're doing it because that's God's commandment. He didn't say, uh, if, you tithe, I mean, if you want to tithe, go ahead. It's a commandment from the Lord. Everything is from the Lord is for the Lord. When God blesses us back, he does it on the sow you will reap. If you sow, it will reap to you. He's testing the condition of your heart. And the, most, the hardest thing for us to give up is finances, because we need it for food, we need it for money, or we need it for housing, we need it for everything. So that's why he tests us. Do you trust me, and do you, get, do you trust me to, to, to tithe with, with your money? And if you do tithe, and you do test me, and you do do that, you sow, you will reap. It may not reap what you want. It does not reap maybe a, a Mercedes Benz or a, 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 a mansion. God doesn't want you to be comfortable. But you'll get it back what you need to continue to spend, uh, shed the kingdom glory. Remember in the Torah it says, you should not store up riches and gold and silver for self. He wants us to expand the kingdom glory. That's why he's testing in the heart. That's why Jesus talked about the, the subject of money more than anything else. He knew that was the key. Do we tr do trust God with what he's blessed us? What, remember what King David said when God says, you're not going to be able to build a temple because you have blood on your hands. It's going to be your son Solomon. So David didn't sit back, get on the couch, and say, you know what, I've done everything I can. I'm going to eat Cheetos until the Lord takes me home. No, David uh, helped Solomon uh, with the planning. He helped get the, get, get the articles for the, the temple. And he didn't use the, 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 the treasury money of Israel. He used his own money. And he says, what I've gotten was from the Lord and is for the Lord. Without the Lord, I would never have gotten these riches. So he gave the glory back to the Lord, and he used his own financial wealth. And if we put the, the measurement into gold in today's terms, it was equivalent of about $3.5 billion that David gave up of himself because we can't take it with us. He, we, we can't take it with us. We can't store up riches and gold for ourselves. And he's going to tell us here another a very important verse of what the true riches are, and those riches are, are for the, from Christ Jesus. I rejoice in the Lord greatly now that last you care. Verse 11, now that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am and to be content. So Paul, in his old life, before he was born again, and I say old life because it's a new life. He was born again. He was a, he was a Pharisee. He was a Sanhedrin. He was studying under Galileo. He has Ph.D. in Judaism. He has Ph.D. in philosophy. He was a rich man. He was a zealot. But then the Lord took all that away from him, and he never was rich. He didn't know where his next meal was going to be. He was beaten. He was put in prison. And he, he found himself to be content in all things. And that's what we need to be, too. The Lord wants us to be content in all things, not be a roller coaster ride. When it's good, it's easy to praise the Lord. When it's down, that's when we seek his face in 911. We need to be content with all things as Paul was. He was content with whatever God gave him because he knew his home, were, his home was on the high, and he knew God would provide. He would provide when it was needed and for it was needed. Uh, I mentioned this in our Bible studies before. When I was in Liberia, one of the pastors said to me, he goes, um, we, you know, here in Liberia, we, we, uh, we have it much better than you, you folks in the, in the United States. 
And I said, how is that? I, I knew where he was going, but I wanted him to, to, to finish it. And he says, well, here in Liberia, we have to be content in the things that the Lord has for us. We don't have a lot of, 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 of expensive things. We don't have big houses. We don't have cars. We don't have iPads. And we don't know where our food's going to be. We don't have running water. We don't have toilets in some cases. We literally have to rely on the Lord every single day, hour by hour, minute by minute, to get through the day. And you folks in America, have given, God has given you everything, and you take it for granted. And it's true. We have taken it for granted. And we need to be content in all things and go back and, and, and do all things for the Lord. Because it's not storing up for riches and silver for here. Because we can't take it with us. In our home on the high, our riches are in Christ Jesus, as, as Paul's going to say in this famous verse here in a minute. Now I speak regarding a need. Verse 12. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Every, everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer in need. He's had it always. He knows it's when he's been hungry. He knows when he's been full, and he gives blessings to the Lord in all things. Remember, Paul and Silas were beaten 39 times, and they were thrown into a rat-infested jail in Philippi, and they gave praise to the Lord. How many people would be beaten uh, with inches of your life, and then you throw into a rat-infested jail, and you'll give praises to the Lord. And it brought jailers, brought the jailer and his family to Christ, and probably brought prisoners. They're looking at him like, you're different. How can you be thrown into a rat-infested prison with blood and, and stripes all over you and be beaten, and you're giving glory to this God that we don't know? What is this God? Who is this God? Who gives you that peace and joy that the world can't give you? That's being set apart. That's being set apart for the glory of the Most High. Now, the real last, okay, in verse 13, it's very important. This actually we have in our workout room uh, to give us strength. And it's not just the strength, physical strength. It's the strength that can only come through Christ Jesus. It's the strength that, that could only get me personally through since the, the botulism and the other toxins that have come into my body. I've come, I haven't been able to do it my own strength. That was God's way of putting a thorn in my side, so I had to rely on him on all things, literally every minute of every day to get through it because I don't have the strength of self. And he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can do all things. So I, meaning Paul, or any Christian can do all things only through Christ who is in you. And it's for his purpose and for his glory. That's where our strength comes in. It is Christ. He says, I will make your yoke light. I will pick you up. I will carry you. He is the one set of footsteps in, in our times of trials and lives, as the famous poster says. And he says, well, God, where were you in these trials and tribulations? There's only one set of footprints. He says, that's my child when I picked you up and I carried you. And it's so true. He carries us, and that strength can only be from the Most High through His Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 14, Nevertheless, you have done well that you have shared in my distress. They shared in the distress. They prayed. They kept it. They, 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 they prayed for him. And that's what we need to do is pray for, pray for ministries that are impacting, other, uh, bringing in kingdom glory. Pray for other brothers and sisters within a body and their distress to help build them up. The prayers are incredible. We did a fasting uh, for many of his glories around uh, the, the nation uh, the first of the year. And uh, there was literally thousands and thousands of people praying for me personally and this, the ministry of his glory. And I literally could feel the prayers. That is how powerful they are. So if there's anything that you want to do for his glory, please, please pray for God's hand to be on his ministry to bring in the harvest in these end days. Praise his name, because prayer works. Now you Philippians know that in the beginning, um, ver, I'm sorry, verse 14, nevertheless you have done well that you shared in my distress, as we said. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving, receiving, but you only. All the other churches didn't give. Uh, they, they, only the church of Philippi. And that's what the church is supposed to do today. We as Christians are supposed to give to the churches, to give out to others, to bring in the kingdom glory. And we're, we're not to hold that back. And the church needs to do that today in America. Um, 99 out of 100 uh, church, or not 99 out of 100 churches, but 99 out of every dollar for the church in, in America today goes to building costs and salaries. 99 cents out of every dollar. That's crossed, that was a Pew report about a year ago. 
So that means where's the outreach? Where's the harvest? God didn't want us to create buildings. Yes, you're supposed to uh, have salaries within um, the ministry. We don't take a salary. Nobody here at His Glory does at, at this particular junction, and we pray that we never will have to. Every dollar that comes in goes back out to bring in souls uh, all over the world. Uh, but it's to spread the glory of the Lord. That's what the purpose is. Jesus left and says, preach the gospel from east to west to north to south to every creature, not to build a new basketball court, not to build a new kitchen, not to build a brand new beautiful building. We at the church is us. We are to go out in that light. The church lights never go off and the church never closes because we are the church 24-7, praise his name. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for necessities. They were, they were giving what they could to support the ministry of Paul. Now that I seek the gift, but I, he didn't seek the gift. That was God inspiring them to do that. He says, I, but, I, but, I, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. So that's what God is doing. That fruit that comes from the blessing of a ministry or blessing those who are bringing in the harvest of the Lord, that fruit is accredited to your account with the Lord. The Lord is going to look on you and say, well done, my faithful servant. I gave you money. I gave you these, any items that he's blessed you with, and you did with what I told you to do. You sowed, and then you reaped. And this is a credit to your count when you go to heaven and go to the Bema seat. That is the fruit that you will grow. Where a tree, a good tree, is supposed to bear good fruit. So if you're a Christian and you're born again, we're supposed to bear fruit in the name of the Lord. And people say, wow. And people will be amazed in what a walking and talking a true Christian will do. Not just talking, but walking. Are you walking the walk or are you just talking the talk? Anybody can say you're supposed to do this, but are you rolling up your sleeve and actually doing it? As Jesus says, the harvest is full, but the workers are, 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 are the, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Not all churches, the majority of churches are not rolling up their sleeve and doing what the Lord wants them to do. They're talking the talk, but they don't, they're not walking the walk. We need, to, we need to do the boat. We need to do both. Walk the walk. It's more important to walk the walk and let Jesus talk the talk. Praise his name. Now that I seek the gift, as he said to your, your account. Verse 18. Indeed, I have all, all about, uh, have all and abound, and I am full. Having received from Aphrodite the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to Theos. So the gift it was, it was well-pleasing from God, meaning Theos in three in the Greek. Theos means three, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Verse 19, And my God, my Theos, shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is what he supplies our needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. He's not, supplying, uh, he's not supplying our needs to build a brand new uh, 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 a building. Maybe he, he does do that, for ba uh, maybe a bad example, or a basketball court. He doesn't want you to be rich. He doesn't want to have a huge home. It's not for self. Not store up silver and gold for self. It's to, to, to store up the riches and glory for Christ Jesus. How do we do that? Spread his glory all over the world. Preach the gospel exactly the way the Lord. Show that joy. Show that hope. Take care of the elders, the, the fatherless, the orphan, the widow. Help spread the gospel from east to west and make that uh, uh, show that we are worthy of God trusting us with money. Money is very, very important to the Lord. That's why he tests us on money more than anything else. Verse 20. Now to our... Our, our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. A glory to God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. When we have him in us, we have that glory, that kingdom glory, because we are one in him, as the scripture says, forever. And nobody can take that away. We, are, we live in that agape love with him forever. Great, uh, greet every saint in Christ Jesus. Again, according to the scripture, a saint is any believer in Jesus Christ. It's not about a certain denomination that says you have to do X number of miracles and you vote on it. No, saints, we don't go walk around and say we're saints because we're a believer of Christ because we don't want to puff ourselves up. But the scripture says you are a saint and you're a king and, you're a king and, and priest in the name of the Lord and a saint because of your love and because of you accepting Jesus Christ 
and his love for us. That's what makes uh, us a saint. That's why he's calling them the saints of these particular churches. It's not for their own glory. It's for the glory of God. Greet everyone saint in Christ Jesus, in the name of Christ. Everything's to Christ, for Christ, for his glory. And the brethren who are with, uh, with me greet you giving their love back. Verse 22, all the saints greet you, especially those who are in Caesar's household. The saints that have come to know the Lord. Paul, just like God, to put Paul in change in Rome under Caesar's control. And he is, worship, he is, he is worshiping the most high God and spreading the gospel of the kingdom glory through the blood of Jesus Christ throughout all of Caesar underneath his nose. And saints are coming in because of that. Praise his name. He's, he, God does it in just abs, absolutely in unbelievable ways. His ways are not our ways. As he says in Isaiah, my ways are higher than your ways. We trust him with all things. Verse 23, and we close out uh, Philippians 4. The grace, and it's the grace. Everything's by grace. It's all by his grace that we get this free gift. The grace of our Lord. Kairos, meaning highest in the Greek. It's the grace of our Lord, highest, supreme. And Jesus Christ, the anointed one in the Greek, the Messiah, be with you all. Be with you. May Christ be with you and his divinity and his kairos be in you and all things he does in you is what gives you the strength. We pray that Philippians 4 has been a blessing to you and may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you till next time. God bless.